right, part eight of Who the Fuck Did I Marry? So we some And yes, who did the blank that she marry? So, hi, my name is Sonia. I'm with Melanin Goddess Life. I'm a practicing astrologer, and I look at current events from an astrological standpoint. And this lovely lady behind me, if you have not been looking at this lovely lady here, at least for the last week or so, you must have been hiding under a rock because this lady right here has had TikTok in a chokehold. She has put together what I consider a documentary of her experience being married to a pathological liar. It is a 50 part series. Go to her page, look at this, the documentary. It is going to be so mind blowing to you. She takes you through all the twists and turns of being married to a pathological liar. She is an awesome storyteller. I just keeps you captivated. I can't say enough because it had me in a chokehold for two whole days. Now, being that I'm an astrologer, I always like to look at things from an astrological standpoint. So I was curious as to what the astrolog astrological makeup was for Miss Risa Tisa. So I was able to get some information on her. She has recently celebrated a birthday, which she did share with us, and her birthday was on February the 15th. She turned 36 years old. So with that little bit of information, I was able to get some general information with regards to Miss Risa Tisa and a little bit of insight as to why she could have possibly found herself in this situation with this person. So she was born February 15th, 1988. That makes her an Aquarius sun, a Capricorn moon. And because I don't have the uh, birth time for her, I'm going to have to do a 50-50 on the rising sign, which would make her a Gemini rising. But the thing that I want to look at is her Aquarius sun. If you know anything about Aquarius energy, Aquarius is the sign of doing things differently. Uh, it's the sign of breaking the mold, not doing things status quo. quo. It's also uh, the sign that is ruled by um, in modern astrology, Uranus, and in a traditional astrology, Saturn. So what comes with people with um, an Aquarius sun or Aquarius placements is you may find that they find themselves in unpredictable, unexpected situations. The dynamics of their life are always some type of twist and turn, and it's always some kind of a surprise element to Aquarian energy. They do things outside of the box and they have experiences that come their way that are outside of the box. So this definitely lends to her being in the situation with her ex-husband. She's also a Capricorn moon. And the thing that sticks out for me with her being a Capricorn moon and being a, um, a female Capricorn moon is she said something in the series, whereas she was really taken by the way that her ex-husband paid all the bills. If you know anything about Capricorn moons, particularly female Capricorn moons, um, they may find themselves in situations or relationships that are transactional, where they will stay in a relationship, particularly a, re a romantic relationship, where they are being provided for. So I found it very interesting that she made a note that it was very intoxicating or it felt very, very um, good to her to have someone taking care of her financially. That lends to her Capricorn moon. Now, the thing that I want to get to is the special formula that I have that I use to come up with when I'm trying to determine when a person is about to go into their love cycle. Um, she's mentioned that she's not dating at this time, um, not really sure where she is on her healing journey with regards to dating, but she did speak on she's not dating currently. So I have a calculation and a formula that I come up where I determine which age a person could see some kind of dynamic change with regards to their love life. And because she stated she's not dating, so I'm assuming that she's single, I did come up with the age in which I feel like something can possibly shift or change with her love life. The age in which I came up with that I feel like Risa Tisa may meet someone or something's going to change with her love life is actually the age of 36. So the year 36 from this last birthday a few days ago to her next birthday, February 2025, she may find herself in a relationship. She may find herself finding love again. She may find herself dating again. But love or love lessons or maybe she's on a journey of self-love 
will be a big part of her year of 36. And I am super excited for her. Another thing that I was looking at, she just announced that she is actually going on her dream trip because she mentioned it in her documentary that Paris and London was the place that she most wanted to visit. And I just saw a video that she was stating that she is going to be going to uh, Paris and London and she has a trip planned and coming up. And I'm super excited for her with that. And that kind of bodes to what she currently has transitioning going on with her transition uh, transit chart. She has Jupiter, the planet of growth, expansion, healing, and opportunity going through her 12th house. Now, this bodes for two things that is currently going on with her. The 12th house is about our healing, about our traumas, uh, about our secrets, about things that hold, we hold on to that could possibly be um, hurting us, detrimental to us. She is on a healing journey with that Jupiter going through this 12th house because Jupiter is the planet of expansion, growth, and healing. But the 12th house also is the house of foreign lands. And Jupiter is the planet that rules long distance travel. So I just think it is just so on par for her to be taking this journey of self-discovery and self-healing and also this actual journey to a place that she wanted to go you know, to a foreign land. I'm super excited for her on that. I will say this. Um, she is also experiencing her, her Jupiter return in her 12th house. So again, this is all about the cycle of healing. So I feel like this particular time in her life was the time that she needed to tell her story and get it out. She is in the midst of reclaiming herself, healing herself, and sharing her story with the hopes of helping someone else. And I think that's one of the big primary reasons that she wanted to share the, her story was to help someone else. And she is in the cycle of doing that, and I am so happy for, for her. But again, I'm going to put it out there. The year of 36 is going to be a big love year for her. I wouldn't be surprised that she announced that she is back out there dating and could possibly be meeting someone that is better suited for her. I wish all the love and happiness for her. I want to let her know that I loved her story. I am rooting for her and I think I hope everything goes well for her and she actually might find may find the love of her life when she takes her her trip because again Aquarius is all about bringing in different and new experiences. So be open Miss Tisa, open your heart because love is out there for you. And so that is my 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 uh, astrological view on the wonderful storyteller that is Risa Tisa. You guys have a great day and I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.